We're kicking off this Wednesday edition of the Sportsmax Zone with regional football, another international window, meaning that uh, the CONCACAF Nations League uh, tournament uh, and plenty of action to come throughout the week with the competition resuming earlier on Wednesday. The first game of the day was a League C Group C clash between group leader St. Kitts and Nevis taking on the winless British Virgin Islands. That match shown live on Sportsmax with a game ending 3 1 in favor of the Sugar Boys. First half strikes from Roberts and Amory, ensuring that uh, the Sugar Boys uh, top the group with a commanding 3 0 record. Let's remind you of the matches still to come. Later on today, uh, the US Virgin Islands taking on the Group A leaders, Barbados, who have a 2 0 record going in. That's live on Sportsmax at 8 o'clock Eastern Caribbean time, 7 in Jamaica. And Belize, who have won their two previous games, they're up against Anguilla. Uh, that match is on Sportsmax 2, 10 o'clock Eastern Caribbean time, 9 o'clock in Jamaica. And Anguilla with a one win uh, draw and a loss so far. The fixtures for tomorrow, Bonaire taking on Montserrat, French Guiana facing Honduras. That will be live on Sportsmax at 3.30 Eastern Caribbean time. Cuba take on Trinidad and Tobago. That match is on Sportsmax Plus and our YouTube channel at 4 o'clock Eastern Caribbean time, 3 o'clock in Jamaica. St. Vincent and the Grenadines are taking on El Salvador, SVG, with their new coach, Ezra Hendrickson, a former multiple MLS champion player. And Nicaragua, they're up against Jamaica. That match is a late game at 10 o'clock Eastern Caribbean time, 9 o'clock in Jamaica. The reggae boys traveling to Nicaragua for that fixture. So lots of exciting action coming up. Uh, TNT, they have an important assignment coming up. Uh, Mariah, we spoke earlier this week about the return of their experienced players, Jovin Jones and uh, Kevin Molino. And uh, they badly need a win for coach Derek King, interim coach. Yeah, very, very important. They're at the bottom of their group. They've only had um, one draw, one loss, a total of one point. So, I mean, it's a time where Trinidad and Tobago will need to pick themselves up, Lance. Um, I'm happy that they have the senior players deciding to come out of retirement and rejoin the squad. For me, though, there's a cause of concern, and that concern is, you know, match fitness, match readiness, uh, chemistry within the team. But I'm hoping that, you know, all those things can just be dusted off and we can get the necessary win to ensure that, you know, we're not relegated to lower level. Yeah, and uh, as we see Derek King in charge of the TNT team now, Barbados also having a recently appointed coach in Kent Hall. Yes. And he's made a good start with his team. Two wins from two matches so far. And uh, they would be fancy to beat USVI tonight. Yeah, and the last time Lance, they played USVI, they won 3-0. So that speaks volumes not too long ago. So I think Barbados will be coming into this match on um, a lot of confidence, feeling very, very good about themselves. And they're going to want to hope that they can repeat that result. U.S. Virgin Islands, though, I think they're going to study what they did wrong against Barbados in that 3-0 loss. And I don't think they're going to be a massive pushover. They're going to have to try to improve on what they did last time. Yeah, they would have to. And as we mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, St. Vincent and the Grenadines with Ezra Hendricks are now in charge of their squad. Um, they'll be up against El Salvador, so that will be a tough assignment for SVG. Now, after officially announcing the Reggae Boy squad for the upcoming fixtures over the international break, Mara, who has been a busy bee over the last couple of weeks in St. Lucia with Olympic sprint champion Julian Alfred earlier this month, and now a sit-down one-on-one for Sky Sports and Sportsmax with Reggae Boy's boss, Steve McLaren. Coach, how are you enjoying the Caribbean weather? Let's start there. Yeah, I thought you would. <laughs> yeah, it's always nice to uh, to come to Jamaica. Um, the weather, as you say, it's always warm, hot, sunny. Occasional rain, showers, storms. Um, the people are great. I think that's the the biggest thing for me is the, the people have been fantastic towards myself, the staff, everybody who's come over. Seal it up. Seal it up. Seal it up. Seal it up. Yeah, that's funny stuff. Seal it up. There we are. Sorry, Good. I bust my I know, I know. My oh, fault. Look me in the eye. Seal, seal it up. Uh, respect. You should yeah, respect. No problem. Seal it up. People are so friendly. Yeah. Uh, always smiling. Want to do anything for you. So I, I love that. Uh, but the biggest thing is the, the passion they have for football. 
I didn't realise it at the time, but they're crazy about their sport. Um, so that passion, yeah, although not in numbers, uh, certainly is there. Yeah, you speak about the weather. I have to ask about the food. We Caribbean people love our belly. Have you had the opportunity to taste the food in Jamaica? Yeah, we, without a doubt. Uh, the, the diet, you know, has to be Jamaican. We're, we're melting into the culture, yeah. shall we say, and part of the culture is food. And, you know, we in the UK, we do like our food. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's very different. Um, but, yeah, we, we're used to it. We're experienced enough. We, we've travelled the world, all different kinds of cuisine. And uh, the Jamaican one is very interesting, but very nice and uh, like the weather, very hot. Yeah, very hot for sure. Now, leaving England to move to Jamaica, there must have been a couple of factors that influenced that decision to just pick yourself up from home, which is your comfort, and move here. What influenced that decision? Um, football. But no. um, you know, it, as I said, it's been documented that you know, I worked with FIFA for, for three years on, on, a, on a project about world football. And Jamaica was a part of it, just one of the countries that I had to analyse. I thought, wow, what, a, what an island with potential. Um, you know, not just players on the island, but players off, players playing in MLS, players playing in the UK, and top players. You can get them all together and make a good team. I said that three years ago. and. Here I am, three years later, um, kind of living it now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. I knew there were many aspects to this job that would, that would at my stage in my career, um, excite me. And that's why I came. And that's why, yeah, it has its ups and downs. It certainly has its challenges. But uh, in terms of, I'm a learner. I like to learn, I like to experience. This is a wonderful experience. Now, one of your key roles, and I remember speaking to the JFF president, would be the fact that you know the overseas players and a key role would be scouting. So you've been gone on your mission, finding these English-based players. Have you been able to come up with anybody? That is something that we need to develop. Um, I'm going to talk about that. You know, this is second time I've I've come over with the with the squad on camp. It's a great opportunity to talk to the board, and that's what we're going to do. But have you been able to see any English-based players that have caught your attention yeah, and can th work? There are so many. There are so many. I can't name. I don't want to name. Okay. But there are there are so many that um, I didn't realise. Um, I've got a list back home: 50, 60 players from. 17 upwards, who all um, can represent Jamaica. And they're all playing high level, either in top academies or Premier League, Championship, even League One, Two. So the talent is out there. And, and I think it's, it's, it's instead of going in a sweet shop, which you can do and go, oh, I want that, 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 and that. We have to just take our time, be patient. What do we have at the present moment? utilise what we've got to hopefully win games. Yeah. And then uh, parallel to that is recruitment and saying, OK, we need a real specialist in that position. Who can we recruit that's better than that person at the moment? So these have the opportunity, but we're also looking to, to bring in um, extra talents, warriors, leaders, whatever you like to say, to, to improve the squad. The vision? 2026 World Cup. Yeah, and as you say that word bringing in players and you say the word talent, I think about Mason Greenwood. Where are you in that discussion with Mason Greenwood? Yeah, we're always in, in touch and I had a chance meeting with Mason before I actually joined here. So we had a little chat about Jamaica even before I joined. Uh -huh. And um, I was he, he knew about Jamaica's interest and he was very interested. And, you know, that's something that's Again, running parallel in the pipeline, but our focus at the present moment is on the next two weeks and winning football matches. Now, you've also been at the helm when it comes to England. 
uh, their interim manager, Lee Carsley. What do you think about if he is actually an appointed head coach? Yeah, uh, Lee, I coached Lee when I was starting my career at Derby. Uh, he was a 17, 18 year old. And what, what he's done in the game, what he's done with his, with his talent, what he's done through sheer hard work um, and, and total focus, uh, I think is remarkable. He's gone from you know, someone who maybe you know, was just an average player in the Derby County Academy, 17, 18, to becoming, moving to Everton, Premier League player, taking his, into his coaching. And he's, he's kind of that modern coach, you know, real empathy about him, he's a real nice guy. And yeah, he's, he's done well at every level he's gone, whether he's gone in as interim manager, I remember at Brentford and playing against him and, and doing so well and working for the FA. And it's a special kind of job, international football, it's a special kind of job. And it's like Gareth, he grew into that yeah. starting out and Lee Carsley has followed the same path and he knows the players. What a big advantage that is because I know coming here, you know, all of a sudden you're in camps every three or four weeks and only three times in the year that you don't really get to know the player, you know, and it's a difficult job and you have to be a certain kind of character to do that. And, and Lee has proved to be, you know, perfect in terms of up to the 21s and he certainly started his reign very well and and he's his own man I like that you know when I look at the squads and what he's picked and who he's left out yeah you know it's as much as that as anything that you can tell he's his own man yeah one of the main things uh, coming out in that interview there Mara is uh, his reference to the number of talented players that he sees on the continent with potential to represent Jamaica, 50 to 60. That's, 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 that's a huge number. Yeah, and Lance, of course, it speaks volumes. Coach has been tasked with that um, role of scouting players, looking for players with Jamaican heritage. And I think that list is something to be excited about because one of the things we've noticed, um, Jamaican the reggae boys team, it thrives on the local talent, but it, they're complemented by those international players. So for me, I'm looking forward, I'm excited. I even had somebody tell me that one of the players actually are from Liverpool. So I'm not too sure who the player is. I did ask coach about it, but he said he couldn't say who it was. So I'm really excited to see what that list looks like. And I'm going to keep following up and ensuring that, mm -hmm. you know, we know what's happening first. Yeah. <laughs> and from a personal standpoint, the sort of reaction and review that you've gotten from your friends and, and fans um, <laughs> appearing on Sky Sport in that interview? I mean, many people said that they expected it. Um, it's not something that came to them as a surprise. They think that I can, of course, um, represent on um, one of the biggest stage. I'm very honored, though, that, you know, Sky has been able to see my work and they think it fit. Because, you know, belonging to the Caribbean, coming from um, a small island like Trinidad and Tobago, you never really think that you'll get the opportunity to do those type of interviews. So for me, it's a big, big deal, Lance, and it just makes me even more hungry to see what else I can do in this mm. career. I thought you had lunch at 2 o'clock, though. Yeah, but you know what <laughs> but I mean. But you're still hungry. <laughs> what? You all found that was funny? No. <laughs> Is it break time? Yeah, I think so. Okay, we, we, we go to break. We'll have more on the Sports Matter Zone, and we still have some more football to talk, and we go to TNT as well. Back in a moment. <laughs> 